Hey YouTube, today we're going to be comparing two different pistols here, one made by Smith & Wesson and one made by Glock. And what we have here on top is a Glock 17 and what we have chambered 9mm and what we have here is a Smith & Wesson SD9VE chambered in 9mm. And before we go any further, I'm going to show you that neither one of these pistols have anything in them, and we are clear to make this video. We have yet to shoot a bullet through the camera, and we're not going to start today. So what we have here is a Glock 17 chambered in 9mm. This was the original Glock that came out in, I believe, 1980 or 81, somewhere around that time. And this was a groundbreaking design, folks. It was a polymer frame pistol with a metal slide on top, that, a 9mm that held a bunch of rounds. This one holds 17 rounds in the magazine, so you essentially can carry around 18 rounds of 9mm, and they are known to be super reliable. They say Glock perfection, and they mean it, because this is probably going to be one of the most reliable guns you will ever own, if you have one. They were The design is so simple. It's just they were made for simplicity for the consumers to be able to tear them down real easy, clean them. And there's very small, small amount of moving parts in them. They are not lookers, but... They are very reliable, very good gun. Just a groundbreaking design made by Gats and Glock in the 80s. So what we're going to compare this to is a Smith & Wesson SD9VE. This, is, this was originally when it came out. This came out in 1994, and this was Smith & Wesson's first attempt at making a polymer frame pistol. Now keep in mind, folks, we see polymer pistols all the time in today's times. But back in the 90s, you didn't see any polymer frame pistols except for Glocks. It was a big joke that these things are made out of plastic. How good could they be? Well, they're very good, folks. They absolutely are the best when it comes to striker-fired pistols. And this was Smith & Wesson jumping into the ring. But what they didn't um, count on was they infringed on the patents of Glock when they designed this pistol and it was a pretty pretty well pretty reliable pistol the grip angle was a little bit different it's more similar to a 1911 and if you want me to be honest with you which I always am it's actually a little bit more comfortable in your hand than the Glock is the Glock has a little bit different it's got kind of a weird grip angle and it's always felt just a little strange in your hand until you get really used to them. This one feels a little bit more natural in your hand. So when these came out in 1994, it was originally called the Sigma. And they were just a polymer frame gun with a metal slide. And it was striker fired. And people started looking at it and said, man, the thing looks just like a Glock. It did not have the Picatinny rail on it, but neither did the Glocks. They didn't have a rail on them when they came out with the Generation 1s or the Generation 2s, for that matter. So Glock started looking into this, and they actually sued Smith & Wesson for um, patent infringements, and they won. They actually won the lawsuit, and... They, it was settled for an undisclosed amount, and from what I've heard and what I've been able to gather, Smith & Wesson actually had to pay a royalty to Glock for every one of these pistols they sold. And they were more than happy to do that because this was a more affordable pistol than a Glock, and they sold a lot more of them. So they could actually afford to just pay, pay the royalty and just keep producing them, which is what I would have done if I would own the company too eventually the patents are going to wear out and you can be able to do whatever you want to do just like today everybody makes a striker fired pistol now now i'm going to attempt to do this on camera i'm going to show you how close this is now i have another video on this um particular gun that goes in depth about how all the changes they made then you know the original was called the sigma and then shortly thereafter they came out with another model that only held 10 rounds because of the assault weapons man and everybody knows smith and wesson had a tight relationship with the Clinton administration and they signed some kind of agreement with them and that's why they put those stupid locks on their revolvers and man that was almost detrimental for Smith & Wesson anyway but they made a 10 round version of this and then they went back after the assault weapons ban and this is a newer one this is the most recent model one and this one it is called the SD9VE it supposedly has a little bit better improved trigger and it's got this little Picatinny rail on the front serrations, but I don't know all the 
exact difference is but anyway i'm going to shift to do this on camera you pull the magazine out check double check make sure it's not loaded pull the trigger in a safe direction then you're going to grasp this thing here and you're going to pull down on these two takedown levers just like you would any lock so you take the get my hands on them here take the two takedown levers down and this slide just slides right off of it and you look at the inside and it looks awfully familiar here folks so i'm going to set this aside and i'm going to do the same thing to the glock take the magazine out check double check safe direction grasp it put the two takedown levers down and the slide comes off now if you look at these side by side very similar it looks almost identical folks the design of it. it's like every other striker fired gun and the way you do these things you just release this spring here and the barrel just lifts out of it same with the smith and wesson take the guide or take the guide rod off of it and the barrel just lifts out of it so the designs are almost identical if you look at the way they're designed it's 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 almost identical folks it's 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 amazing that they even got away with this which they really didn't get away with it they had to pay for it so in order to put them back together just put the barrel in and insert the guide rod and the spring back in and let it rest in place right there on this barrel same with the smith and wesson we're going to put this barrel drop this barrel right back in here and do the same exact thing insert this thing in here and there at rest well i say there at rest there we go sometimes it takes a little finesse folks when you're trying to do something on camera so we'll look at the frames here side by side they're it's almost an identical design folks if you look at them here just looks like any other striker fired pistol that we all see in today's modern times but remember in the 90s there was no other different design besides the glock right here and smith and wesson just decided to absolutely copy it and just throw it out there and seeing what happens so in order to put these back together i always stumble on camera like i said but you just line this rail right up here and you slide the slide back and chest it for function and insert the magazine in it and then it goes same for the glock light it up on here rack the slide chest it for function and put the magazine back in it so basically folks what you have here is almost an identical design both of them are nine millimeter both of them are full size and both of them hold 17 rounds the glock is a little bit larger a little bit larger it's a little bit longer here and the sights the glock has the same crappy plastic sides they've always had on here and the first thing people do usually do when they buy a glock is change the sights on them smith and wesson uses more of a dovetail type like 1911 sight on it and it actually has a little bit better sight picture it has a three dot system and i believe this is a little bit more durable sight than the glock but most people would change their own sights anyway on all these things and put them on here. But I just want to show you this little bit of controversy that happened. And I've mentioned this before that, that Glock has been copied so much. And it's such a common practice in today's time. But this was the original people that copied it. And they actually ended up, ultimately had to end up paying for it in the end. But anyway, folks, I figured it was an interesting piece of history, firearm history to do this little video for you today and show this little side-by-side -side comparison and it's essentially pretty much the same gun they um i think the glock's a little bit better trigger in it than the smith and wesson here I'll, I'll demonstrate it here a little bit if you look at the trigger glock shot about it's a little spongy it's got that much take up and then the reset on it it's pretty tactile the smith and wesson is probably not quite as good it's just there's the um there's the trigger pull on it and the reset's a lot longer and then it's just a little bit spongier feeling but all in all it's not a bad trigger for what you get this is a very inexpensive pistol you can be bought for almost half of what a glock can be bought for not quite but you know almost half and these things have just gotten a bad rap because they just got a bad start in life smith and wesson has since come out with a ton of of polymer frame pistols you know they got their 
M&P series, which is a pretty popular series, and they got all their little carry shields and all that kind of stuff. But this is the one that got it started. This is the first company and the first gun to ever make a striker-fired pistol besides Glock, and they pretty much copied them. If you have any questions on this stuff, folks, I'm not an expert, I'm not a historian, but I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. And thank you very much for watching my video today, and you folks have a great day.